Hello everyone, my name is Kanav Hasija. I am the co-founder and chief product officer at Innovesa. Thank you for taking our time to listen to us. The time that's keeping you away from the great work you are doing in keeping patients healthy. Today, you are going to take a journey into the world of artificial intelligence, specifically AI and healthcare. And what AI can do in the short term to solve some of the healthcare's biggest problems. The launch stands as a testament to our dedication to the noble mission of simplifying healthcare, while simultaneously enhancing the quality of care. Central to our philosophy is the belief that those who administer care should not be burdened with resolving issues lying beyond the scope of their medical training. Rather, technology should help address even the most nuance of those requirements. It is with these ethos in mind that we venture boldly into the expansive terrain or artificial intelligence. But first, let's understand what's happened over the last eight months in terms of explosion of awareness of use of AI among the public and what the implications are for healthcare. AI isn't new. The first essay on what we call AI, as we may think, was published in 1945, 78 years ago. In 1956, a computer scientist, John McCarthy, coined the term artificial intelligence, and it stuck till date. The first AI model went live in 1958, when Dr. Frank Rosenblatt built the Perceptron for the US Navy. The Perceptron used a five ton IBM 704 machine and punch cards. It was the first machine which was capable of having an original idea according to its creator. It had a single layer and a few dozen neurons that could read data to teach itself new things. You might also be surprised that AI in healthcare has been since 1964, starting with Dendril, the first medical expert system. Over the last 20 years, the advancement in computing and big data have enabled AI to be applied more broadly. Disruption in hardware, including dedicated GPUs for AI, and low-cost memory has made it possible to accommodate tens to hundreds of billions of neurons which have been able to help computers emulate the human brain. The human brain has over 80 billion neurons. Give it a thought. For computers to achieve general intelligence, these deep neural networks need to have more neurons than the human brain. AI models based on neural networks that try to emulate the human brain were started in 1958, as we recall, with a dozen of neurons. Some large organizations could afford over a billion neurons to build the AI models in the 2012 to 2016 timeframe, thanks to the low cost available GPUs and again other hardware. Enabling by the advancement in computing hardware capabilities at affordable costs, over the last decade, we are now seeing neural networks trained on more than 170 billion neurons, exceeding that of the human brain. With all this activity going on for years and decades, why has the interest in AI seemingly exploded overnight? Predictive AI, which uses numbers as inputs and outputs, has existed over two decades, helping organizations predict sales forecast or flag anomalies in imaging results. But it was and still remains limited to an elite set of data scientists and subject matter experts, not the mere models in the boardrooms, C-suites, offices and coffee shops. But last year, language-based generative AI models hit the public radar with launch of OpenAI ChatGPT. Suddenly an AI that so uses the so-called large language models could be operated by anyone on the planet using the most natural language tool called language. The new approach to AI models made it accessible to anyone who wants to ask a question. It also seems magical at times when it gives a response which is, seems like thought through from a human expert in the field, like you see on this slide here. But generative AI's reasoning from foundational models isn't always accurate. That's because it's trained on a corpus of human knowledge available on the internet 
and its training is not systematic and progressive. In fact, even the inventors of these LLM models will admit that they don't understand exactly how they work. In a manner that's very similar to how your autocomplete feature on smartphone works, generative AI is trained to predict the next best words in their response. The result is that it can invent responses using the next best words that appear accurate and authoritative, but they're not. That's called hallucination. And it is a statistically inevitable byproduct of an imperfect generative model that's trained to maximize its ability to predict the next best word. While generative AI has a huge potential for healthcare, it must be responsible and trustworthy. First, it must be accurate. It must understand the healthcare in great detail and provide evidence-based, clinically grounded responses that minimizes any chance for misinformation, misinterpretation, or harm. Second, it must be secure and comply with the security and compliance standards like HIPAA. Many health system CIOs have blocked or otherwise forbidden the use of publicly available generative AI engines for their organizations because they can't meet those requirements. At Innovacer, we have invested an enormous time, energy, and resources to address these real and tough problems with both generative AI and other forms of AI. Healthcare is far more complex than the other industries due to diversity in biomedicine and the re reimbursement models. Besides many factors, one in three dollars spent in healthcare is wasted due to human bias. Innovacer intends not to propagate those biases in the use of AI. We have invested and worked and will continue to focus intensively to teach our generative AI models the complexity, the knowledge of healthcare, while mitigating bias to ensure a equitable outcomes. We are teaching our models the business of healthcare by training them on healthcare data model, which comprises of more than 2000 entities to define things like what is a payer and what is a provider and what is a prescription and what is an appointment or even healthcare concepts. Generative AI can give you a good answer on what is diabetes, but can it help you to detect diabetes in data by using more than 200 ICD codes? formulas. Generative AI can give you a good answer of what is a PMPM, but does it know how to compute PMPM from the data it's trained on? Or even the 40,000 disease, their symptoms, their diagnosis and disease interactions using evidence-based clinical documentation, not the internet corpus of Wikipedia and Reddit. Training AI models on these healthcare concepts improve its accuracy when responding to questions. While not every problem needs generative AI, many documentation, interactive and conversational use cases do. For example, to answer a healthcare data question, we used foundational natural language processing algorithms and trained on our proprietary AI models with healthcare concepts to improve its accuracy when answering questions with natural language, both as input and output. We put over a corpus of 1,000 frequently asked questions from healthcare data and we found that the accuracy of our model is 15% higher than models like GPD 3.5 or 4, which were also trained on the same healthcare concepts that our model was. But that's to say, not every problem is solved through LLM models. At Innovacer, for the last decade, we have been dedicated to invest in R&D in developing technologies that ensures data quality and serving the data at the right time at the right place for the right people. Over the next 10 years, we will continue to invest significantly in AI, in healthcare as well. But we will do so with the utmost attention to our responsibility as healthcare service providers, with an unwavering commitment to ensuring it's accurate, it's secure, it's compliant, and it's unbiased. At the same time, despite there is a huge excitement on generative AI, it might not be the best solution for every healthcare problem. Instead of going all in on generative models, we will carefully select the most appropriate AI technique for every use case. Generative AI is one but of many tools available in our larger AI toolkit. We will leverage the full spectrum of AI capabilities in order to bring the best solutions to our customers. Healthcare demands privacy and privacy is regulated. 
you have spent immense amount of time and resources building your intellectual property around providing high quality care. With Innovasa's AI, all of your data, including user prompts, outputs, knowledge bases, clinical guidelines, and patient's data, will never be shared outside our secure private networks. It will never be used to train any other AI model but yours. And it will never be shared with any other customer or third party for the purpose of training other AI models. As you consider investing in AI models into your corporate strategy, I encourage you to ask your internal experts, consultants, and competing vendors these hard questions around security, intellectual property leakage, and compliance. Because sourcing these new generative AI solutions is an uncharted territory for nearly everyone in healthcare. It's new to all of us. With that, I would like to announce our new AI product. We launched it in March of this year called Sarah at HIMSS. It received an amazing, overwhelming response from press, analysts, and healthcare leaders. And we are very proud of that. But we also said that SARA will be something bigger. And today we are thrilled to announce that we have kept that promise. We are going to unveil the expanded capabilities of SARA and show you how we are taking SARA to four compelling use cases to accelerate healthcare transformation. For many of you who are interested in the Eastern mythology, SARA's name is inspired from the Hindu goddess of knowledge and language, Saraswati. And we hope it lives up to the name. This is just still the beginning. Beyond the four use cases that we're going to show you today, and even more that are being researched and developed in our labs using SARA. Get ready for AI that's responsible, AI that's ready for you, AI that's ready for your patients, and AI finally that's ready for healthcare. Clinicians burnout has been an issue for more than a decade. It got drastically amplified during COVID as we have all seen. And one other thing got amplified is that rapid innovation need not be feared, which will bring down the undue risk to healthcare organizations. Healthcare workers have spent years in training to deliver good quality care. Yet increasingly they spend too much far time in low value work. This is a major contributor to the rising burnout rates. What SARA has the potential is to reduce that low value work, to cool the burnout among the care team members and to boost their productivity and help return the joy and satisfaction of providing healthcare to their lives. But there's a boundary we're not crossing and that is to develop SARA to make clinical decisions for you. As an industry, we must let doctors be doctors and let nurses be nurses. AI must be a partner, not a provider. Today, we're excited to announce that we are bringing SARA to many of our products and solutions and to assist clinical, financial, and operational roles across healthcare. SARA for Insights will help executives and analysts to get instant access to, the, to answers to complex queries without knowing database query language. SARA for Care Management will help care coordinators spend more time with patients by assisting documentation and care planning. SARA for Point of Care will help clinicians reduce their EHR administrative burden and bring more face time with the patients and reduce their pajama time. And SARA for Experience Centers will help contact center agents streamline their workflows, improve consumer experience, and optimize their processes. We will now show you how SARA has been very carefully woven into the very fabric of all these products to make your lives and your colleagues' lives even better and your organization is more productive. To start with, I would like to introduce my friend and colleague, Dr. Anil Jain, who is an engineer, a practicing physician, a clinical informaticist, and our chief innovation officer. Hi everyone, I'm Anil Jain, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So I'm a physician, as Gunnar mentioned, but I'm also a clinical informatician. And so this topic is of incredible importance as we think about the role that information technology has had in making the life of every caregiver and all the administrators that support them a little bit easier. 
Now here at Innovacer, I serve as the Chief Innovation Officer. Uh, I've experienced firsthand the challenges that healthcare leaders, clinicians and innovators have been facing and see the potential that health information technology has to address these challenges head on. But before I put my physician hat on, let me put my physician leader hat or my executive leader hat on and think about the role that data and analytics plays from the perspective of making decisions. We all know it's about data. So here's an example of what a typical executive might be feeling. And I know that they're typically not looking at eight monitors, but they might feel like they are. They have data coming in from one place, another set of data coming in from another place. But how in the world do they make timely and relevant insights when they not only have to understand the underlying healthcare data models from a data point of view, but also all the different rules uh, that drive different key performance indicators in terms of what goes into the measurement process. All the numbers and the charts and graphs that they need at their fingertips is often elusive when they have to go back and forth with the particular problems that lay at hand. For example, when they have to start thinking about some of the challenges around the complex querying tools, understanding what is structured query language, what is the data model that I'm going to be using. So in some cases, they need to have some help. Many organizations have spent a, a ridiculous amount of money with their business intelligence teams. The ability to have their clinical leaders and their executive leaders go back and forth with analysts to solve on the solve the challenges. And in many cases, the executives are often reliant and dependent on the technical expertise, often from the analysis or research teams that, that uh, support them. And this, this back and forth and this reliance on this back and forth takes what often would need to be seconds to minutes, maybe hours, into something which we typically see in the healthcare spectrum as typically weeks to months in terms of getting good answers back. This complex iterative process is a challenge, but what if we could do it a little bit differently? What if we can start to think about asking Sarah to help? Asking Sarah a question and having an answer come back in seconds. So let's talk about Sarah for insights. Let's revisit the Sarah that Kanav just spoke about. What if business leaders can just type their question in natural language and have, that, have it go back and forth interactively? Let's have a look. So which are the least performing cost and utilization metrics for an MSSB contract? And Sarah, because it understands healthcare terminology, it understands the business of healthcare, both on the delivery and reimbursement side, can come back and give us some answers about what are the performance costs and utilization metrics. And, and whether it's three letter acronyms like CMS or four letter programs like MSSP, Sarah understands the various alternate payment models it understands the population health and the KPIs that drive it, and value-based care programs and the key performance indicators that need to be monitored to achieve success. For example, let's look at how this type of interaction could put business leaders at ease. So once you have a description of what's happening from a key performance indicator, you can now start to ask, what are the drivers of hospital readmissions? And Sarah comes back to the user, whether it's a business leader or an analyst, here are the drivers. So once Sarah has described the data, our business leaders will want to know what's causing the performance the organization is experiencing. And so therefore, they see what the drivers of that experience are. These opportunities can be identified by Sarah because its ability to produce diagnostic analytics, it understands what defines a bypass surgery and what defines a respiratory infection admission. And now that we know that these readmission rates are higher than what we would expect, we can start to ask ourselves why and what. And Sarah understands that when you go from descriptive to, to diagnostic, that we now need to say, what is predicting these readmissions? Well, one can go further. We can start to ask Sarah more information and get more information about those particular cabbage emissions and talk about the very specifics of who is getting readmitted. So for example, we can ask Sarah, identify the patients currently admitted to, the, to or discharged recently from the hospital in the last two days diagnosed with a cardiac condition. And Sarah, with the appropriate permissions for some users, can actually tell us who those individual patients are. And in fact, in this case, it found more than 500 patients who met this criteria, and it's going to tell us who they are because I have permission to see them. But if I didn't have permission, Sarah is smart enough to understand that it could still provide the information I need by redacting information I should not see as a user. And, and Sarah can, can sort of use this to build a dynamic cohort. It could constantly be tracking 
who these individuals are that are being admitted for cardiac services. So one of the things that Sarah can do, now that we've seen who has been admitted to the hospital, we can start to ask ourselves, can we actually predict which patients would be in the hospital? And Sarah can retrieve that information applying a risk model. And in fact, an innovator proprietary risk model to predict those that are at highest risk for being admitted to the hospital. So here's an example of where we're asking Sarah to predict who might have a high readmission risk. And in what we get back is the number of individuals. And again, you're only going to see the, the specific information when that user is allowed to see specific information. At the end of the day, Innovacer can actually leverage not only its proprietary predictive machine learning models, but it can also utilize third-party models as well. Now, once you know who's going to be admitted to the hospital, all of a sudden you can actually use this to drive additional insights into different applications that you'll see in a little bit. We can save this as a cohort. Now that I've saved the cohort, I can now come back to this anytime I want to come back to the particular cohort. The additional thing that we have to recognize is that when you are able to go through this in such an interactive manner with the data, essentially you're having a conversation with the data, that you're able to get answers in minutes and not weeks, greatly enhancing the ability to do continuous process improvement. Sarah not only allows for that interactive conversation, and as kind of mentioned, it is very, very accurate. Now, because we can trust the accuracy, and because it understands this, we think of Sarah being somewhat smart in being able to answer our questions. But is it really, really smart? Now, I've had the good fortune of working with some of the industry's finest business analysts, data scientists, and business leaders who are making decisions. And I will tell you, Sarah will indeed keep up with them. If you can trust the data, and you're able to identify those at highest risk, you can now use this as a springboard to think about, now how can I intervene in this population? These individuals are at high risk for getting readmitted to the hospital. Can I actually intervene with a transitions of care management appointment and so, sort of reduce their risk of being readmitted to the hospital? Now, once you have trusted, valuable insight, and now you have this cohort of those who are at highest risk for readmission, you can start to apply interventions, meaning we take insight into action. And so I just served my role as a business analyst or as a decision maker or a, an executive who's trying to understand the crux of the problem. But how do I now impact it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to hand the mic over to my colleague Aaron Boer, who's going to tell us how Sarah can be used in the care management space. Thank you, Dr. Jane. And hello, everyone. It's so nice to see you all here. Thank you for attending. I'm Erin Boyer, Clinical Transformation Leader at Innovacer. A little bit about my background. I'm a registered nurse, a certified professional in healthcare quality, and I have an MBA in healthcare administration. My career passion is to help as many patients as I can. Today, I'll be talking about a role that's at the heart of my career passion and something that I have personally embodied as a profession for more than 10 years, a care coordinator. Care coordinators spend most of their time trying to connect with patients and assisting them with their care needs. The majority of their time is spent in reaching out to patients, listening and advising on their questions and concerns, ensuring the proper documentation is completed for each interaction, and then generating plans of care. Based on an analysis done of over 1,000 care coordinators' usage data on Innovacer's care management software, on average, care coordinators spend around 25 hours per week documenting their calls and care plans. And I think that we can all agree that every health system would argue that their budgets for care coordination are limited and that they wish that they had more care coordinators to engage with more patients more often. Due to the limitation of care coordination resources, 45% of high-risk patients who should be engaged by care coordinators are missing out on this vital aspect of health care management. Think about that for just one moment. That's nearly half of the high-risk patients. Innovacer's care management technology is one of the most advanced care management solutions in the industry, even before adding our new AI capabilities. It's now used by more than 1,000 care coordinators across the industry. Innovacer's care management software collects relevant healthcare data from longitudinal patient records created by the Innovacer platform and automatically assigns tasks to care coordinators on a daily basis. This automation improves care coordinators' productivity by freeing them from having to manually look up patient records and collect their pertinent healthcare data before reaching out. Now, let's bring AI into the picture with Sarah for Care Management. Sarah helps care coordinators push the boundaries of productivity to the next level. 
Let's say I'm a care coordinator using Innovacer Solutions. When I log in to begin my day, I see that I have to speak with Emma Thompson and work on her Transitions of Care protocol. This protocol will help me ensure that she's educated and taking care of herself post-discharge. When I call Emma to understand her problems or concerns, which include higher hemoglobin A1C levels, back pain developed post-discharge, and having trouble sleeping, I get to input Emma's health conditions and Sarah will automatically generate a care plan that includes goals and interventions for me. I can then add to or edit the care plan and discuss it with Emma. When the call is complete, Sarah can automatically generate a transcription and a smart summary of the call, helping create added efficiencies in documentation. Lastly, I need to document structured responses within the care protocol as much as possible before connecting with the next patient. Sarah helps me by automatically filling out these structured forms to the fullest extent possible by instantly reading the transcript, interpreting questions in the care protocol, and adding the structured documentation. Of course, I have the ability to review and modify this documentation as required, but Sarah has completely eliminated the need for me to document them from scratch, which saves me a ton of valuable time. Now, I can fit more calls in per day and have a greater impact on patient health, and I'm less at risk from burnout thanks to Innovacer's care management automation and Sarah's intelligent assistance. Innovacer estimates that these three features, care plan preparation, call summarization, and documenting outreach within a care protocol will save care coordinators around 10 or more hours per week. This time and cost savings will allow them to engage with 35% more patients in need of care management, making them 50% more efficient at their job. By reducing the amount of tedious documentation that consumes so much of their workday, Innovacer and Sarah will help care coordinators reconnect with the purpose and meaning of their work, which study after study has shown is essential to creating joy in healthcare workplaces, an essential psychological benefit for reducing the scourge of burnout. Most important, and as I mentioned earlier, my career passion, and I believe the career passion of every care coordinator, is to help as many patients as we can. With the introduction of Sarah for care management, care managers will be able to enjoy profound productivity improvements and see the positive impact they're having on many more lives. And at the end of the day, that is what it's all about. And now, I would like to turn the microphone back over to Dr. Jane, who will be walking us through Sarah for point of care. Dr. Jane, the floor is yours. Thank you, Erin. What Aaron just showed us is how powerful Sarah can be to help reduce the cognitive burden that care managers have. And for those of you colleagues of mine out there who are practicing clinicians, this is probably an all too familiar situation where you are laboring away at charting your notes, documenting, perhaps during the day, but more often than not in the evenings, time where you should be spending with your family and loved ones. You're finishing your notes with this pajama time is an all too real phenomena. Many of us probably feel like this octopus here that has to have one hand on the keyboard, one hand on the patient, one hand on the stethoscope, one hand on the clipboard, collecting and collecting more and more data just so that we have a better understanding of what's happening with the patient. And the technology is not making it any easier for us. The health, electronic health records, as vital and as instrumental as they have been in changing the way we practice, have not figured out how to solve every problem when it comes to the cognitive load. We actually have to be multitaskers when we're in the exam room. We have to make eye contact in order to keep the patients at ease. We have to make sure we're paying attention to all the information in the chart so that we make sure we don't miss anything critical. And we gotta make sure we get the story straight. Otherwise, we might miss vital information that the patient is trying to tell us. And if we're looking at the, the screen and the keyboard, how are we reading the body language? It turns out no matter which report you read, and these are generally been very consistent that we spend an enormous amount of time, more time than we should on documenting in the electronic medical record, more than 100 minutes every single day. Now, when you look at surveys of physicians, and, and kind of alluded to this earlier, when you look at surveys, anywhere between 40 to 60 percent of providers feel burned out. And this burnout comes from a variety of factors, but it comes from the, 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 the burden that they have with dealing with technology that doesn't necessarily allow them to do what they feel most comfortable doing, which is conversing with patients and focusing on clinical reasoning. Now, when we think about the overall goal that clinicians have, they all want to do the right thing for the right patient at the right time. The ability to spend all their time charting isn't why they signed up to go to medical school and become physicians. 
It's really the, the, the back and forth when it comes to clinical reasoning. So many of them, like that octopus, feel like they have to be great multitaskers. What if we can help them with that? What if Sarah can help them with that? So here's an example of a conversation between a patient, Emma, and her doctor, Dr. Shaw. Let's have a look. Good morning, how can I help you today? Good morning, Dr. Shaw. I've been experiencing some persistent back pain recently and I'm not quite sure what's causing it. I'm sorry to hear that. Let's try to figure out what might be causing your back pain. Can you describe the pain for me? Is it a dull ache or a sharp shooting pain? Now, what you just saw was just a snippet of a conversation between Dr. Shaw and Emma. Now, we deliver our ability to provide ambient documentation through InNote, which is our EHR agnostic overlay solution. You know, the point of care is a very busy place. Alerts are firing off. There are different panels. And what we're doing is using our InNote solution to drive not only the ambient documentation, which you'll see the result of in a second, but the ability to drive and deliver insights at the point of care. For example, filling a quality gap. Emma here seems to be overdue for her breast cancer screening and her colorectal cancer screening. In addition, during the visit, Dr. Shah is also being told that we should be considering the diagnosis of morbid obesity. It's missing from her chart, and that diagnosis is critical so that Dr. Shah and his health system and practice get reimbursed for the appropriate care that they deliver. Let's go back to that snippet of conversation. Let's assume that we had heard the entire conversation. What Sarah can do is it can listen to that conversation because it understands medical terminology and medical concepts, knows the difference between who's the patient and who's the doctor, and give us a very smart summary. Let's have a look. With one click, it's going to go through that transcription and say, Dr. Shah, here is a summary that you can now use for that clinical reasoning that you should be focused on, going from chief complaint and HPI all through the assessment and plan process, along with the follow-up that might be needed for Emma. The ability to create this smart summary allows Dr. Shah to focus on the conversation with Emma and then bring in whatever is relevant into the chart later on. And if Dr. Shah has any questions about the smart summary that was generated, he can simply click on the transcription button and see what the conversation between him and Emma was like. That level of transparency builds trust so that clinicians know that what Sarah was hearing is what was actually said. Now, once you have the ability to create this, you can now start to think about what the point of care might look like. And in many ways, our point of care tooling for Sarah, ambient documentation is really just the beginning. You can start driving insights to the point of care, care gaps, coding gaps, and start thinking about other low value work that clinicians are burdened with that Sarah can help clinicians with. So when you think about it, so what Sarah does for clinicians and physicians is what Aaron talked earlier about for care managers. What I'd like to do now is that invite Aaron back to talk about how the first point of contact that a patient has can be enhanced by using Sarah. Because we all know that the physicians are generally not the first point of contact that uh, patients will have. So uh, Aaron. I think it's fair to say that we have all called into a hospital or a clinic before. How was your experience? Was it helpful? Did it feel like a personalized interaction? And were your questions answered? In many cases, unfortunately, the answer is no. But what we don't realize is that the compassionate and dedicated customer care representatives answering these calls don't have the tools and resources they need to deliver a helpful and personalized experience. They don't have the data the information, or the scheduling systems available to better serve patients and community members. According to a study conducted by the American Health Connection, more than 65% of patients demand a higher level of customer service and healthcare this year as compared to last. Patients with unhappy services are four times more likely to choose another health service provider, while average turnover in a health service call center is about 25%. So how do we fix this? Sarah for Experience Center takes on this challenge. First, Sarah's AI model will be trained on your organization's knowledge base and have access to your scheduling, ticketing, and documentation systems. Second, as a virtual assistant, Sarah will actively listen to agent-patient conversations with appropriate consent. 
As agent-patient conversations unfold, Sarah will look up and provide the relevant information the call center agent needs to help them achieve their goal of first call resolution on every call. With access to the information they need quickly, provided by Sarah, agents will also be able to complete calls faster, which reduces call handling times, another key performance metric that drives better patient experiences and a greater patient satisfaction. Let's see how Sarah can assist and support a call center agent. Good afternoon, and thank you for calling Acme Health Center. My name is David, how can I help you today? Hi, um, I'm Emma. I'm having trouble with my medication. The pharmacy said it's not covered by my insurance. I apologize for the inconvenience. Let me check that for you, Emma. Can you please confirm if your last name is Thompson? Um, yes. Great, thank you, Emma. And do you still live on 123 Main Street in Lincoln, Nebraska? Yep. Excellent. Thank you so much for confirming, Emma. Let me pull up your details. Meanwhile, can you tell me a little bit more about the issue? Yeah, my doctor prescribed me some medications, um, but when I went to my pharmacy to get them filled, it appears that my insurance doesn't cover some of them. Uh, but what's kind of confusing is that some of these medicines were covered in the past, so I'm not quite sure what happened or even what to do next. I see. Well, to resolve this issue, my recommendation would be for you to speak directly with the medication benefits manager. And I'm going to give you just a moment to grab a pen and or a pencil to write down a number. I want to make sure you have this. Okay, that number is 800-234-3253. And they're going to be able to get this resolved for you pretty quickly. So let me also send you this number on text. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. Also, Emma, while I have you on the phone, I do see that you are due for a follow-up appointment with your primary care physician next month. If you'd like, I can get that scheduled for you right now. Oh, yeah, that would be great. That'd be awesome. Excellent. So it looks like Dr. Shah has available slots next month on September 5th, which is about four weeks from now at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., or 2 p.m. Would any of those times work for you? Hmm, I prefer the second option. Let's go with 11 a.m. Perfect. I've got you booked. Your appointment for September 5th at 11 a.m. You will receive a confirmation via email and text shortly. Is there anything else I can do for you today, Emma? No, I think that's all for now. Thank you for your assistance. Well, you are most welcome, Emma. If you have any more questions in the future, please don't hesitate to reach out and have a great day. Thank you. You too. Goodbye. Goodbye. As you saw, Sarah listened in on the agent-patient conversation and helped transcribe the call in real time. Sarah also provided accurate information directly from the organization's source of truth, which empowered the agent to better serve the patient in their moment of need. Did you notice how the agent was able to proactively anticipate the patient's next best clinical action? In this scenario, it was for a follow-up visit, a common but often overlooked task for patients. Sarah was able to recommend this next best action by using insights from the patient's clinical data. Lastly, Sarah, after helping the agent transcribe the meeting, summarize the call and help document the ticket's specifications so that the ticket could be closed quickly allowing the agent to be prepared for their next call. At Innovacer, we've estimated Sarah for Experience Center can produce a reduction of roughly 10 hours per week in time spent on documentation for agents. This is based on close to 1,000 calls and the data captured from those calls within our Experience Center product. By reducing the amount of time agents spend with documentation, they can increase their daily call volume by 25%, which means increased efficiencies and more patients served on the first call. I hope you've enjoyed being among the first in our industry to learn about and see the AI innovations Innovacer is bringing to our customers to revolutionize the future of healthcare. I'll now hand the baton back to Kanav. Thank you, Erin, and thank you, Dr. Chen, for those great overviews. I would like to put a bow on today's keynote by rolling up what we have learned and seen today and shape what I think are the key takeaways for our friends in the audience. While AI has been around for more than 80 years, 
and is successfully used in several verticals of healthcare context today, such as imaging or wrist stratification. This is the year that AI is coming into its own by creating a horizontal. Anyone and everyone can log into ChatGPT or BART or one of their competition to work with them. But can you rely or trust on them? Healthcare needs predictive, prescriptive and generative AI that is universally accurate, secure and compliant. With Sara for Healthcare, we are creating a promise to continue to invest in developing proprietary AI technologies that ensures healthcare data quality and have the right data presented at the right time in the right setting. As trusted healthcare software providers, we develop technology that are accurate, secure, compliant and unbiased. And lastly, we strive to develop the best AI solution for every healthcare problem. That won't always mean generative AI. Instead, we will carefully determine and go with the right AI technique for each individual use case. With generative AI being but one of the many AI tools in our toolkit. And before we recap the four AI innovations we have launched today, I would like to put your, your attention to the QR code on the right hand side of your screen which you can scan to learn more about our AI products. First, there was Sara for Insights, which will help executives and data analysts converse with data in plain English. Sara will understand healthcare data models and terms. It will have access to healthcare benchmarks and predictive models. And our goal is for Sara to help you get accurate, relevant and actionable insights interactively. Reducing the cycle time from weeks or months to even minutes or even seconds. And ask questions to get insights and make decisions faster with confidence. Next, we launched Sara for Care Management, which will help care managers automatically transcribe calls with patients and with good summaries. Sara will also help assist documenting the care protocols with as many autofill responses as possible using the call transcripts and the care protocol questions embedded into it, which can then be modified and verified by the care coordinator. And finally, Sara will also help to build a care plan that can be edited by the care manager as per the best experience. We estimate that Sara can help reduce 10 hours of documentation time for care managers per week, thus reducing their administrative burden and giving them more time to help more patients in need. Then we launched Sara for point of care. So a part of care will help clinicians transcribe their calls, build visit summaries, as well as prompt potential coding accuracies or quality gaps coming out of our deterministic algorithms. We hope that Sara can cut more than 10 hours per week off a clinician's pajama time spent on documentation each week. And in doing so, help health systems cool burnout and bring back the joy of practicing medicines to clinicians' lives. And finally, we have Sara for Experience Center. Sara for Experience Center will help contact center agents automatically transcribe patient calls, generate summaries for them, pull appropriate responses from an organization's knowledge base, and contextualize the suggested responses to the patient's needs during the call. Sara will also help suggest preventive care opportunities for contact center agents to consider and communicate with patients to provide a good customer experience. As Innovasa's proprietary healthcare assistant AI model, Sarah, represents a breakthrough in healthcare AI and kicks open the door to the future of AI in healthcare at the same time when Sarah understands healthcare terms and concepts, interacts in plain English and helps healthcare professionals across the continuum of care reduce their research and documentation time, ease burnout and aspire to improve patient access and experience for all stakeholders providers, care managers, contact center agents, and most importantly, the patients. Most of all, Sara exists to provide and achieve healthcare's true north, optimal delivery of high quality care. I would like to personally thank every one of you for taking our time out of your busy schedules to attend Innovasa's annual innovation keynote and participate in what we believe is a turning point in the industry, the future of AI in healthcare, built for you with accuracy, security, compliance, and incredible ease of use baked in by Innovasa. If you have any questions, comments, feedbacks regarding our solutions, please, please feel free to contact myself, Dr. Jan, and Aaron Boer. 
or any of our experts in the teams. We are more than happy to provide you with a personalized demo of our products and accelerate the future of healthcare together. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.